In this video, let's take an updated look at creating morph targets or blend shapes, as it's sometimes called, in 3D Coat. What you have here is a low poly retopo mesh overlaid over the top of a sculpt object, which is typically a voxel or high poly sculpt that resides in the sculpt workspace. If you are importing a low poly quad mesh like this from another application into 3D Coat, I might suggest first importing it in the Retapo workspace in the entire mesh subsection of the tool panel, or you can go to the mesh menu and choose import. From that point, you could bring a copy of this into the sculpt workspace to where you can then subdivide it to your liking and start your sculpting work there. Okay, so let me step into the sculpt workspace and show how that would occur. All right. We could either go to the geometry menu and choose retopo mesh to sculpt mesh, and that would bring it into whatever sculpture layer that is currently selected. Or I can also create a blank layer, perhaps. Um, yeah, I'll just go ahead and hide this one for the time being. I'll create a brand new layer, and I can scroll down to the objects section here or space O2, and we are immediately in the import tool. From here, whatever is visible in the Retapo workspace, we can copy into this environment by clicking pick from Retapo. And once we've done that, we can subdivide it if we like before we apply it to a specific layer. You apply it by hitting the enter key or the apply button. That will then commit it to whatever sculpture layer is currently selected. I'll go ahead and click pick from a topo, subdivide, and then hit apply. Now to hide the preview object, all I have to do is choose any other tool. I can hit the W key to turn wireframe off, and we can begin sculpting. We can also add multi-resolution levels. For example, if I want to go up one more, I can choose add top level and just continue doing this as I go, and then I can always step down whenever needed. To do so, all I need is to click the up or down level button. You may want to assign hotkeys to them. I've already assigned the up and down arrow to them, so I can just hit those hotkeys to quickly step back and forth between these levels. When sculpting morph targets, you can sculpt as you need at any level, and 3D Coat will store the sculpt layer information on the selected layer, and it will be reflected throughout all the subdivision levels. After we have gone through the various stages to create the initial neutral pose, we would then turn our attention to creating new sculpt layers to generate these individual morph targets. We will also use duplicates of the original neutral pose in the Retapo workspace. And then, as we make our changes here in the Sculpt workspace, Conform Retapo Mesh will allow the low polygon target mesh to be conformed to whatever changes we make here to the high poly. Okay, so it'll make sense a little bit later if you don't know exactly what I'm talking about. But yeah, so I have here a neutral pose on the Sculpt layer and a few different targets. I'll create another one from scratch. All I need to do is create a new sculpt layer, then double click on it in order to name it accordingly. I'll probably use a prefix of SL for sculpt layer and then name it surprise because that's the gesture I'm going to create. If I were texture painting this object, I would give it the prefix VP standing for vertex paint. I will now switch to the Retapo workspace where I want to go straight to the polygroups panel and create a duplicate of the neutral pose. We will use this to make our new morph target. To do that, let's click the duplicate icon at the bottom of the panel, then click the apply button in the tool options panel in order to commit this to our new Retapo mesh layer. I'll click no to this prompt because the one it was copied from was already snapped. Now let's name this one. Surprise. The next thing we want to do is hide the neutral pose layer. And we will go back to the Sculpt workspace to begin sculpting our new morph target. The first thing I want to bring to your attention is the Conform Retopo Mesh feature that I mentioned earlier in the video. 
With that checked, you will then see a transparent overlay of the Retapo mesh. It's important to emphasize that this overlay is of the visible Retapo mesh in the Retapo workspace. So for example, we would not want the frown or the smile Retapo meshes to be visible while we are trying to create an entirely new morph target. Okay, let's go ahead and get started here. I first want to make sure that my newly created surprise scope layer is selected and the only one that's visible. Then I'm going to go to the color palette and switch to the image picker and select a reference image to use while I create this facial expression. I will also change my brush alpha to something a little bit softer. I will also switch to the move tool, which I will utilize most of the time when creating this morph target. Yeah, let's go ahead and Try and raise the eyebrows here. We could use the new multi-resolution system to add higher subdivision levels or lower subdivision levels. And there are two different ways of doing it. One is decimation. The other is to use the retapo mesh as the bottom most level. And then 3D Coat's gonna create intermediate levels in between and in such a scenario as this, where we already have a nice clean low polygon base mesh to use, this is probably the preferable method because our topology will be much cleaner than the default decimation method. Nevertheless, I'm going to do most, if not all of the editing here on the current high poly mesh because the performance using the move tool is more than adequate for the job. With this expression, since the mouth is so open, I probably want to freeze one part while I work on one side and then invert the mask to work on the other. I could just click on the freeze brush or I can stay in the brush that I am currently using and hold down the hotkey for the freeze brush to use it on the fly. Once I release the hotkey, then it will go right back to the tool I was previously using. This is the sticky key functionality here in the Sculpt workspace, and it's great for using with other tools as well. For example, if you're using a clay brush and you suddenly want to tweak the proportions or use the move tool on the fly, you could assign a hotkey to the move tool and use that as a sticky key to quickly make an adjustment on the fly and then go right back to your clay brush. I can see that I was not able to mask the entire lower lip. There is some part on the inside that I need to still apply a freeze mask to. As a side note, when you see the fast forward icon that indicates that I'm speeding up the playback in order to try and shorten this video as much as possible. So go back to the move tool. So I'll smooth this out in just a bit. I want to try to shift all the polygons up. Okay, so I'm going to choose relax. It's not nearly as strong as using the smooth brush. Okay, so I think that is still frozen a little bit. So I'm holding down the control key. Hold down the shift key to again relax all that. To try and keep the demonstration relatively brief, I was trying to plow through quickly without having to worry too much about different subdivision levels and so on. But in hindsight, I probably should have created a few lower subdivision levels so that I could step down, do the smoothing of these uh, trouble areas. That way, the upper levels would have maintained the high frequency detail like the lip wrinkles at least for the most part nevertheless once i'm done touching things up here around the lips i will try and go back and sculpt that detail back in here i'm going to tweak the right eye area just a little bit to clean it up Skipping forward a bit after finishing the cleanup process, I am now going to sculpt the skin wrinkles using the pinch brush. So the pinch brush 
and 3D Coat is effectively two brushes in one. It's like a draw brush. It's very sharp in how it either indents or creates an extrusion, a sharp extrusion, if you will. So it's great for creasing the edges of areas like the outer lips, uh, also the eyelids and things like that. But it also will pinch at the same time. So again, it's a very good brush to use for this purpose. And I'm going to use something like the extrude brush to essentially keep the details here, but just push this area out very gradually. Okay, let me undo that. Okay, I'm going to bring that depth value down and just make, again, just very gradually pull this out. Okay. All right, so let's say this is what we want to use for our surprise expression. Now let's switch to the Retopo workspace so we can see how well the Conform Retopo Mesh feature worked and it did its job. Let's also look at the other morph targets that we have here and compare them. Let me go to the layer panel and I'll hide the surprise layer and unhide the frown layer. Now what I'm going to do is hide the head and I'm going to turn auto snap off so there's no accidental snapping. But yeah, we can see all of our different meshes here now. Now let's talk about exporting. If you want, prior to exporting these models out of 3D Coat, you can use the transform tool to move them out so that you have them arrayed in a linear fashion rather than having them all occupy the same space on the grid. Yeah, you could just select all faces on layer and then choose the transform tool with each individual layer uh, to reposition them. But to export them all, we want to go to the mesh menu and choose export. And it will export all that is visible in the Retopo workspace. You could also export separately by a file. So you could have 3D Coat generate a file for every single one of these individually. So that's how you would generate morph targets in 3D Coat using sculpt layers and creating new retopo meshes for each new target or blend shape. I hope you found this video helpful. Thank you for watching and we will see you in the next video.